Alright, in this video we're going to walk through the installation steps for the Vagabond Motorsports Fender Eliminator Kit on the 2021 and newer Yamaha MT-07. As for what's included with the kit, we'll start with the hardware pack. You're going to get a rubber grommet to kind of tighten up all the wiring loom and prevent wiring chafing. A pair of rubber bumpers to go into the license plate frame to minimize license plate buzzing. A pair of laser cut acrylic um, turn signal spacers and these are just going to thicken up the gap on the OEM turn signals. Um, and to kind of trim them out so they, they, they're nice and tight in those, those holes. Zip tie from wire management. Um, three, two large, one small plastic washers. Those are going to be kind of trim out the, the factory fender or the factory plastics when you remove the factory fender. Um, pair of fender washers and then a set of four socketed cap screws and lock nuts or lock washers, excuse me. And those are going to connect the two pieces of the Fender Eliminator. Now the Fender Eliminator is a two-piece design, essentially a frame mount and a Fender Eliminator body, both of which CNC laser cut from 8th inch thick aluminum, UV uh, resistant satin black powder coat, proudly made here in the United States, and built off of a laser scan, laser scan of an MT-07. So it's designed to fit um, extremely well, and that's why there's this two-piece design, because the factory plastics essentially close in everything except for this small interface. Um, other kind of notes about the Fender Eliminator is that it's going to be OEM uh, lighting compliant, meaning it's plug and play with the factory turn signals and the factory license plate lights. So you maintain all your DOT compliance um, when you transfer over your OEM lights. Um, generally it's a pretty easy installation and we'll get to that now. As for tools you need for the install, you need a 4 and a 5 millimeter Allen key. That can be an L key or a T handle or little socket head bits like this, a um, pair of flush cutters or dikes, and then you'll, we will need 8, 10, and 12 millimeter um, hex sockets. You can either use it in a standard ratchet or a power driver to make things a little quicker. We're going to start the install by removing the passenger seat with the key in the side of the frame. Next we're going to remove the two 5 millimeter Allen head bolts that hold the rider seat on, lift that up, slide that out, set that aside as well. Next you're going to remove the right and left side panels off the motorcycle. So grab your four millimeter Allen key and that's going to be, you can start at the front. There's this two um, black button heads. And then you're going to move backwards a bit to these shoulders, shoulder screws. And then if you go all the way to the back, there's two more four millimeters that hold the rear of the panel in place. Then you're gonna to wanna to switch to the 12 millimeter hex head socket. And there's two hiding under these two rubber covers. So peel those covers up. And then there are two more that are the um, black coated ones. And the black coated ones are going to have spacers in them. So be mindful to pull the bolts out with the spacers. Settle that aside. Quick note, the hex head bolts under these rubber plugs are also going to have spacers that are identical to the ones up here. So be careful not to um, drop them or lose them, but you can set those aside with the other bolts. All right, next we're going to want to take the five kind of um, arranged plastic push rivets and the key with those is you push the center and then use your fingernails to pull out the assembly. So don't push too hard just until they pop and you can either use um, an Allen key like I'm using, you can use a screwdriver, realistically, whatever you need to just push the core in until you hit a click and we will be reusing these so don't lose track of them. That's it. Alright next we're just going to start taking the panels off and so you start at the rear there's two called like plastic plugs on grommets that kind of hold it all on there but there are actually a couple plastic tabs on the tail light so um, if you start kind of in the middle and push in and almost pry up on this part like that, then you can release it off a little tab on the center of the bike. 
and then you are just going to pull straight off the side. Same thing on the other side, just kind of push in to release that rear part of the plastic and then just straight off the bike. Alright, the last step is going to be to take this big crossbar off, so it's four 10 millimeter hex head bolts, and this is just going to allow us to get access to the electrical connector much easier. Again, take that off. We're going to reuse it, set it aside. Alright, next we're going to take apart a lot of the electrical connectors. Um, so we move the factory toolkit out of the way. There's this white zip tie um, here on the factory wiring loom that we're going to want to cut. Um, and so carefully, meaning not cutting the actual looms, cut that zip tie. Let me discard that one. And then there is a clip. And this clip, you can either kind of tinker with a long, uh, small flat bladed screwdriver to try to open it. You can also kind of lift it off of its boss. And we'll, we'll reuse this, but it'll help you get it open because these are, they clip both directions. Just kind of an, an annoying layout. So I'm going to set this aside, but we're going to reuse this. This call it like, uh, they call it alligator clip type thing. So at that point, we have a, should have a little bit more freedom to start pulling cabling out of this little gap. And the whole goal of this is to be able to free up the wiring looms for the turn signals and the license plate light. Okay, so I'm going to start peeling these through. And there will also be the tail light loom in here. We don't need to disconnect it, but it doesn't help hurt to get it out of the way. Okay, so once you've got all your cabling out, we're going to start disconnecting harnesses. So the ones we care about here are going to be the two pin connection. So this big white one, that's one of the turn signals. You push until you hear a small click and then they should be relatively easy to disconnect. That three pin for the tail light, we don't have to worry about. This gray two pin, this one you gotta peel the fingernail up. And then there's one more of the turn signals that's kind of buried. Same thing, you're gonna push this tab until you hear a slight click. And then it can be removed. At this point, we're all free. Let's untangle things while we're here. Um, you can see the three harnesses that we need are all going straight down to the fender, so that means we can take the factory fender off. So if you go back underneath the motorcycle, we can now take off this little trim panel, but you're just going to kind of slide it forward, and this piece is also going to fall. Um, this piece is not being reused, the first one that fell is not being reused, that other trim piece, yes, yeah, but that should be easy enough to put back together. Then there's four 8mm hex head screws that are going to need to be These ones do have factory Loctite on them, so they're going to be a little bit tighter than normal. And obviously the last one, you're going to want to take the, the fender in your, other hand, your free hand and make sure it doesn't fall or otherwise leverage those screws and just feed all the cables out and we'll take the fender down and break it down. Okay, first thing to do when you get your fender off the bike is going to be to pull your license plate. Every dealer is going to kind of prep this slightly different so we don't include any new hardware here. This one has flat heads but uh, it's likely to be kind of anything. Now we're going to split the factory fender at this main plate. And that's going to be four millimeter Allen keys. These are going to be a little tight. Usually they have Loctite on them. Um, so just, I wouldn't recommend a ball end tool here. They are going to have spacers on them as well. Um, 
but none of this hardware is going to be reused for the fender eliminator. It's just if you want to keep your factory fender intact. So then it's going to kind of disassemble itself at that point. Kind of keep track of myriad bolts that are going to fall out of there. And we'll flip it over. So once that spar is disassembled, we'll, we'll take the turn signals and license plate light out of it. So you can get all the harnesses out of what's left of the spar. Um, if you haven't used Yamaha turn signals like this before, you got to kind of pull up on the little tabs of the rubber boot to release that locking plate. And then you can just grasp the whole turn signal by like the clear part, the lens part, and pull it back towards you. And that's just because that front part is split, so it pulls out much easier that way. Um, then thread everything out. Do the other side now. And now we're left with the turn signal, which are going to be those two four millimeter, and it does help to have an extension for this part. Uh, four millimeter Allen keys, that the kind of base, and the only. Suggestion is just to hold on to the light while you're doing this because they can kind of grab like that. Kind of shake out the hardware and pull the light out. Set that aside. And we are going to reuse this license plate light hardware. So go ahead and yank the aluminum, the little like shoulder spacers and the rubber grommets out of the what's re remaining of the factory fender. All right, we're going to start the assembly of the fender eliminator body with the license plate light. Um, and you're going to grab the rubber grommets first and kind of jam them into the two holes. Uh, and then it always helps to flip them over and kind of flip the parts that are stuck so that it actually sits nice and circular. Um, and then as opposed to the factory bike where these aluminum slugs were coming in from essentially the inside out, we're going from the outside in. And that's just to essentially give a very small gap for the license plate light to sit on its isolator so nothing bottoms out. At this point you can thread the license plate light through that first hole, flip everything over, and we're going to reuse the factory screws. However, what we're going to do is just add the set of fender washers that was included in the kit. And the reason for that is it's just going to help push against those rubber grommets um, effectively. And so it's not going to make it super wobbly. And then once you've started them, go ahead and grab your four millimeter Allen key and tighten them up. And since these are just going into small threaded clips, into essentially a plastic um, license plate light. There's no reason to get crazy with the tightness, but you should feel everything kind of snug up and the um, that, that whole spacer stack bottom out. And the reason why we run the spacers essentially in reverse of how they were done on the factory is so we see just a very small, like a one millimeter gap around here so that the light still has give. And so it still is attenuating a lot of vibration coming through and not gonna kind of shake that filament and the bulb too much. Once you've got the license plate light on, we'll move on to the turn signals, and you're going to take the one of the one at a time of the license or the turn signal spacers that we ship with the kit. Um, you do you are going to need to peel the protective paper off both sides so that you don't we don't ship them um, and let them get scratched. And then you're going to have to carefully kind of uh, get this spacer into that groove around the turn signal. And when I say carefully, it's just it is very possible to crack these if you're kind of uh, a little bit overkill with the forcing. Generally you can use your finger and just push the turn signal uh, at that split line and that does all the work. So let's get our spacers on first. We'll do the left side as well. And then this is the black turn signal is the left side, so we might as well start there. Feed the connector through that teardrop shaped hole first, and that locking plate, and then 
pretty much the reverse of how we yanked them out of the factory fender. Um, you're going to want to start seating them at the narrow end and then cram them in through kind of the wide end that's split. And then once that is complete, you'll feed the locking plate down and make sure it's seated in the two tabs, in which case that signal is on and nice and secure. And we'll go on to the other side and repeat the process. Again, kind of start, make sure that space that we ship is going to live on the outside, by the way, just to double and clear. Start with the narrow end of the teardrop, force it in, and then rock in the rest. And occasionally things will get a little caught, and you can just kind of, yeah, peel it back with your thumb. Again, feed that locking plate in. Make sure both sides are secure. And there we go. Nice and tight fit. That has all the benefits of the factory uh, turn signals. So at this point, all we have to do is the wire management. And so start by feeding either of the two turn signals through this hole. This hole is pretty, it is a little snug, but you certainly can just pop the, the connectors through it. Ideally, you don't tie yourself in knots, kind of like I just did. Um, but save the license plate light for last, because it'll feed through no problem. And then we're going to flip everything over and drive the grommet down. So with the kit, we include a rubber grommet. And one of the harder parts of the install is going to be to stretch or roll this grommet over these connectors. And I say roll because you can completely let the grommet roll over itself. It's not going to hurt the grommet at all. And start with the two again. Start with the turn signal cables. Because that is going to be by far the hardest part. Occasionally, first shot doesn't work. Just give it another try. Cram those two through. And once you got those two through, you're on the home stretch. Because again, the license plate light connector is super easy to feed through afterwards. So we're gonna kind of slowly choke down that grommet. And really the only thing to do is kind of flip it over and make sure everything is not like all gnarled up and twisted. So everything's kind of one, two, three in a row. And when you push this grommet down, you're essentially just going to start it in the groove, just like the turn signals, and feed your way around. And it will, with a little massaging, go right in. And just like installing really any sheet metal grommet, you're going to want to flip it over and make sure it's nice and even, and you can use a fingernail to kind of peel it up if not. Um, but you can immediately tell that it's very snug. Like, there's no um, amount of kind of stress on these cables, but they are secure on the way into the motorcycle. So at this point, this fender eliminator body portion is complete and ready to get put on the motorcycle. Next, we're going to put the frame mount on the motorcycle, and you can tell there's a small rectangular cutout in that frame mount where right where it bends up, and that's actually to capture this tooth in the tail light. And so it's going to help, well, it's going to do a very similar thing to what the factory fender does in that respect, and help point the tail light appropriately. And so don't tighten this mount down without having that kind of keyed in, otherwise, I guess you'd risk. Um, damaging the tail light, but until you get several bolts together, it's going to not really want to stay that way. So get everything started by hand, and then you can kind of see how it clicks in like that. Lift the tail light a little bit until it essentially registers, and then you can screw in.
All right, now we can install the now we can install the fender eliminator body onto that newly installed frame mount and push the three electrical connectors through the hole in the subframe out the top side and, and pull them taut and that's going to help get us to the position of being ready to install the four allen head bolts. Now before you actually bolt these two components together what you're going to want to do is grab the central panel that very well may have kind of fallen out um, the central plastic panel and get that thing generally in position because once the fender eliminator is up it's going to essentially capture it in position and so what I would do is hold it up with one hand and get uh, maybe one of the Um, the supplied allen heads, screws, and lock washers. Even if you get it a couple threads hand tight, you don't have to worry about this thing falling out anymore. Once you've got one of those bolts in hand tight, you can go put all the other ones in hand tight as well. And then just use your four millimeter allen key, either in a driver like this on a ratchet or just an L key is totally fine. And Tighten all four to hand tight. You'll feel them kind of get really tight as the lock washer bottoms out, and that is tight enough. All right, before we get the panels on, we're going to take care of our wiring situation here because these, the fender eliminator shortened up or shortened up that whole length such that these are now longer than they really want to be for a clean wiring solution. That being said, uh, the two things we're going to have are the zip tie we shipped an extra one of that we cut and this little clip that goes into a post right here. And so to get everything kind of started, what I would try to do is get your cabling from the fender eliminator and kind of push it. We want it to essentially get out of the way but prepared to come through or zip tie this way. So kind of push it over to the side. You can kind of fish hook your way to. But you also want your license plate light to make kind of like the standard run. So what we're gonna do is there's like a tiny little neck in the sheet metal down here. And that's where the original zip tie that we cut lived. And that's where this one's gonna go. So we're just gonna try to feed this zip tie through such that we get like an open, like a U shape, essentially. Let's grab this guy up. Great, so now we've got both sides at our disposal. Um, we're gonna wanna start with the tail light. That's gonna go down through that. And then over the tail light are these three that we just installed. They're also going through there. And we don't have to make anything like crazy tight right now. But if you get that loop, then essentially you've got control of this loop on this side, and we can start the process of running actual cables. So we'll get the tail light down where it belonged. Um, and then the second tool we have at our disposal is that little clip. And in case we're ever gonna do this again, I'm totally fine that previously the clip was closed this way. It's just as easy to close it out this way. So if we do that, we can take advantage of the fact that that clip cam comes out pretty easily. And grab all your loom first in the clip. You only have to squeeze it too much. And then set that clip down. And it should lock itself in. Now we're just going to make one quick loop with the remainder to connect everything. And you can do this. Um, again, this doesn't have to be, don't tighten your zip tie yet, because that's kind of like your final knob you have to turn. But if we go and we make our loop, again, this all has to occur underneath the seat latch cable, but it's pretty easy. And one by one, drag your cables through that little channel. There we go. So that was license plate light. We really want to do 
is get the longest through first. So we know that one's historically the longest, the, the black lead for the turn signal, the left turn signal. Okay, so everything's through its trenches. And what you certainly can do now is start to make those connections. Because that's why we took that crossbar off, because like the this connector in particular is really hard to get apart unless you do that. But, so let's make that one. Turn signal one. Uh, where are you We're supposed to go? License plate light. And turn signal. Number two. do now is we can kind of get our finger pull back open up these loops that we've made for ourselves to the point where what we want is everything to notionally run the same way it ran before the fender eliminated granted you can you can accommodate a little bit but not you don't have to do much and so you can kind of pull yourself back until those loops look the size that you would like. And we just want to take a tiny bit of caution so that we don't end up in the seat flash plate. So you can always kind of pull this way to get yourself more space. Okay. That looks about how we want it. Everything's tight through there. And through there, this mount is going to go in its post. We're nice and clear of the latch, and we can tighten that zip tie and trim it flush. There we go. Okay. Now we can put the plastic panels back on. Once the wiring is neatly tucked away, we're gonna go back and start reassembling the side panels. And so the first step is gonna be this big crossbar. And that's gonna be your 10 millimeter hex. Next we're going to put on the side plastic panels and these are just going to slide right in like directly from the outside to the inside. You're not going to want to go forward or backwards with this motion. Um, just line up the little plastic pins and this is going to cover, it should over, or I guess the side plastic should wrap around that central plastic panel you put down. So if you end up with things that are staggered on the wrong side of each other, you can sort that out. But the plastic panel in the middle goes to the highest. Doing the other side panel, same thing. Make sure that central panel goes on, uh, I guess, high, right? You want to make sure this panel goes and it overlaps it. And now we're just ready for the bolts and the rivets. Well, the last steps is going to be to reuse all the factory hardware um, to tighten the side panels, on the top side anyways, back to the motorcycle. So you've got four of these 12 millimeter hex head bolts and you've got six of the four millimeter Allen key bolts and the four millimeters you got to be careful don't go too, don't go crazy tight on anything that's just connecting plastic to plastic or even plastic like if it's squeezing and it feels like it's just getting tighter and tighter be careful with how tight you make it Generally, you'll feel how loose or tight they were from the factory, and we're gonna want to duplicate that. These are not that tight. So, last we gotta go under the bike and do all the plastic rivets. On the underside of the motorcycle, we have to put back those five push rivets. And to reset the push rivet, obviously just pull the core back out, so it's kind of poking out. And on this central one, uh, we are missing 
um, part of the factory fender and so you're going to take the, the smaller of the two sizes of plastic washer as delivered by Magmon and stack it on there and that's mostly just going to allow that to get nice and snug and that's true for if you take the two bigger push rivets these two they're going to have a slightly larger diameter head they're built for an extra piece of plastic which is that little like fin on the factory fender and since we don't have that if you were to reinstall these they would be pretty loose and so we give you two of the thicker plastic washers those just go over the head and they just they'll what they do is make sure those don't just get like super wiggly um, last these two front ones install completely normally Also need to reinstall the rider seat with that pair of five millimeter Allen key, Allen head bolts. And last the passenger seat. Now that the plastics are fully installed, you can see some of the kind of finer details of the fender eliminator including how the kind of the wings of the fender eliminator body kind of flow right back into the bodywork and also above the license plate light you can see that little kick up of our frame mount that fills in that gap so it doesn't leave any kind of unsightly gaps like a lot of fender eliminators would normally do once you get the license plate installed go ahead and do a quick systems check just to make sure all the electrical connections are fully seated and functional at this point, the installation is com complete. I'll just give you a couple kind of sweeping views around the installed product with the lights on. Thank you for watching this video. Our products can be found at www.vagabondmotorsports.com.